Life occasionally takes an unexpected turn, and you can't go through it without suffering a few knocks along the way. Change is a fact of life, perhaps even more so today than ever before. Both out in the big wide world and much closer to home, but sometimes change takes us by surprise and can seem immense unreasonable and harsh. And when you're right in the thick of it, it's difficult to see things clearly. Because even though we can prepare for and sidestep many of the challenges that come our way, sometimes everything is turned on its head. In those situations, you need someone who is ready to step in, take care, see through the confusion, and help you make the right choices. Knowing that help is available, should the need arise, brings us peace of mind and makes us feel trig. But what's better than knowing that help will be on hand in case of damage or injury, preventing it from happening in the first place? Good morning, everyone. I'm Lars, and I'm CEO in Tryg. And thank you for joining me this morning, where I have the pleasure of introducing you to Tryg and how we became the largest PNC company in Scandinavia. A high-level agenda for the next 20 minutes. At first, an introduction to Tryg. Then I'm going to talk about uh, three of our acceleration levers that have brought us where we are today. And third and finally, about our most ambition ambitious aspiration yet, our strategy for 24. But first I'd like to introduce you to our mission, which were here right before, so maybe I could get one back. Our mission stands up here, as the world change will make it easier to be trick. And uh, to understand our mission, you need to understand at least one Danish word, and that is trick, which means feeling safe. So both, both our brand and our mission is actually a feeling a quite fundamental feeling. And during the last couple of years, a lot of things have happened in the world, mostly for good, but also something that has jeopardized with our feeling of safe. So therefore, our mission is more relevant than ever. We want to make our customers feel safe, as we have done for centuries. And we, are, we have a long and proud history uh, back in 728, there was a huge fire in Copenhagen, and a couple of years after, the first fire insurance companies were established by royal decree. The oldest part of Tryg is from 731, it's called Copenhagen's Brand. Uh, so we are almost 300 years old, as mentioned at the beginning. In, uh, we started using the truck brand in 1898, and then fast forward to 2000, 2005, where we IPO'd. And last year, 21, we together with Canadian Intact bought Royal Sun Alliance, and the Scandinavian part of the RSA group become a part of truck, and we became the largest PNC company in Scandinavia. Right now, we are in the middle of the integration, which will be concluded in 24. The Troik family, as it looks today, um, we have a majority owner called Troikersgruppen. They own 45% of our shares, and Troikersgruppen is well known and visible throughout Denmark, and we have a very close relationship with them. Because all customers, all Danish customers in Tryg are automatically a member of Tryggesgruppen. And when Tryggesgruppen receive dividend from Tryg, they pay out an 8% bonus to all the Danish customers. Secondly, they are known for their charity work. Uh, they have for many years been uh, distributing donations through the Tryg Foundation. They're well known for their uh, donation within Healthy Living. They give away, away teddy, beer, teddy bears to children at hospitals. 
They pay for the lifeguards among the Danish coasts, and they have made the defibrillators accessible to the Danish public. So together we have been building a very strong and well-known brand. This is our market position today. We are number one in Denmark. We are number three both in Denmark and Norway, and all together we are the largest PNC company in Scandinavia. We have 5.3 million customers, and we are a bit more than 7,000 employees. And we have also been well known for creating quite good financial results. This is our results for 21, where we have a technical result at 3.7 billion Danish. That was our best technical result ever. We have a combined way to at 84.5 and a cost rate to at 14%. And this slide is actually just to show that uh, 21, but we're not just one lucky year. If you, for instance, look at our 10-year average combined ratio, it's 85.7. And these good financial results is also the main reason for the quite strong development we have had in our market cap. I have been working for Truck for many years, so I actually participated when we bought uh, when Trykkes Gruppen bought Tryk for 5.6 billion, and today we have a market cap around 100 billion. So of course this is a journey that I'm very proud of, and we are today the most valuable financial company on the Danish stock exchange. Uh, of course we have been out getting funding for some of the transactions that we have made, but this is mostly because we have delivered 48 good quarters in a row, and of course investors like that. We have had some years where our main focus has been, have been on fixing the basic, and during these years, our growth has been limited. Therefore, we come up with a series of growth acceleration levers, and I'm going to talk about three of them today. Investment structure, organization structure, and innovation. And I'm going to start with the investment structure. We have transformed Truck from being a company based on budgets and controlling, to be a company based on a rolling forecast model, so we always look ahead. We have also decided that we want to increase uh, the money that we invest radically. That is what we show up here. And we have openly invited all the business unit to come and ask for, fun for funding for all their development products. And why we have made the organization more and more decentralized, we have also changed the way that we, uh, that, that we distribute the, the investment money. So we started with a very centralized bank solution, and now we distribute the funding through HI release trains within the local business areas. The second acceleration lever is, uh, is our organization. Six years ago, we changed the organization, so we now have 11 local-based business units. And we have said to all the directors from the local-based business unit that they should see themselves being the CEO of a company. So they should decide the strategy, they should find out where they want to invest, and they should also set their own targets. That is because we know it's much more fun and motivating to work with things that you have decided yourself. So we, at the end, get better results. In this model, we, uh, we have enforced cost, we have incre increased our speed, and we have also increased our business agility because the business unit can decide themselves. They don't have to ask the headquarter. Our third acceleration lever is innovation. When we made the strategy for 2020 back in 2017, we were honestly a bit afraid of disruption. Everybody talks about it, and self-driving cars, and IoT solutions that would be put into houses. So we decided that we have to come up with something new, and therefore we made innovation a key prior priority through the organization, not only for an innovation unit, but for the whole organization. We decided that we want to build a portfolio of one billion coming from new business. And uh, we set, go out and set this target loud, both ex externally and internally. 
And that is because we know what uh, get measures get done. And that had paid off. In the last strategy period, we invented more than 50 new products and services. Uh, and for this strategy period, we had raised the bar and want to add another 1.5 billion coming from new products, new services, and from prevention. Maybe our fear of the self-driving cars were either too uh, big or too early. Uh, I'm not sure, but, uh, but I know that because we have invented all those new products, we have a lot to talk to our customers about. And when you talk to a lot to your customers, they normally buy more, they stay longer, and we have a higher profitability. And our employees think it's fun to work with innovation. So therefore, I'm very proud to say that we today have the highest employee satisfaction ever, the highest customer satisfaction ever, and we have been growing for 40 quarters in a row. So that was a bit about the background for Truck. Some of the acceleration levers that have brought us where we are today. So for the last part of my presentation, I will look at the road ahead. This is our financial KPIs that we have been presented at the Capital Market Day in London, November last year, saying that we have a target of a technical result that's between 7 and 7.4 billion. And maybe, maybe some of you remember a couple of slides ago, I show you the result for last year, 21. It was 3.7, and that was the higher number ever. So in this strategy period, we have to double our technical result. A combined ratio, uh, a target for combined ratio at 82. I know all you insurance people know that is quite ambitious. And a cost ratio of 14%. And to reach those uh, ambitious uh, targets, we have some core enablers. And I'm going to talk about three of them here today. Digital society, no touch claims handling, and sustainability. And start with the, the digital society. Uh, the Scandinavians, uh, Scandinavians have the most digital adults in Europe. Up here I show uh, the number of Swedes, Norwegian, and Danes using online banking. And you can see that the percentages are quite high. Historically, our society are based on a very strong uh, digital public sector. If you are going to communicate with a governmental entity, you have to do it online. If you receive health information, it's online, or documents from the government, online. And we even have an online driver license. So we have, uh, we have all the good reasons for being strong in the digital part. We have had a social, uh, a social digital ID for more than a decade. All, almost all people in Scandinavia had access to uh, smartphones, to computers, to broadband, and they are used to serve themselves online banking, in the airport, in the grocery shops. And, and of course, this should not be different for Truk. But being three, almost 300 years old, we are definitely not born digital. But I think that we early realized that digitalization was go, going to be a core enabler for our future success. So of course, we are working with sales, we're working with self-service solution, and with claims. But we early realized that a truly digital and fully automated claim solution were going to be the future. And if we didn't set up, we're gonna, we were going to be outperformed by some uh, startups. So therefore, back in 2016, we decided that we want to be the world's best within claims. So we said, uh, oh, I shift a bit too early, so baby, go back. So we set a target that we want to have 80% of our claims reported digitally. We didn't have a clue how to achieve that, but we know that if we set a very bold ambition, we could not just make a digital process on top of the existing one. We have to rethink the whole process. Um, so already in 2017, we launched our first fully automated claim solution. That was claims in Norway, travel claims Norway. We were very proud of that. We were not the first in the world. Lemonade had launched their first solution a week before, but we were still proud. We have built ours on top of uh, all our old legacy systems. Now we are building a totally new claim solution together with you guys from Guidewire. We think it's a state-of-the-art claim solution, and we will soon have been delivered on 
our original ambitions. ambitions. And our customers really like when they have a fully automated claims handling. Up here left, I show the customer satisfaction. And you can see if a customer report online and have a STP claims handling, their satisfaction is significantly higher compared to uh, customers that have a manual claims handling. And it's even lower if they also have to report by phone. And on the right side, I show that uh, the average handling time per claim is lower when we use the guidewire system. And we also show that we uh, lower our leakage with 58% because of our new claims solution. So building a new claim solution is not only good for our customer satisfaction, it is also good for the business. The up here, I show my claims portal. In my claims portal, you can do your first notification of loss. Uh, you can communicate securely with the claims handler. You can share documents needed for the claims handling. And if it's a more complicated claim, you could also see what is going to be the next step in the process. Or if it's a more simple claim, there is a fairly good chance that we would have settled the claims within a few minutes. And as you saw before, our customers really like that. This, this, the third and last uh, enabler I'm going to talk about is sustainability. Our customers, customers in Scandinavia want us to have uh, sustainable products, sustainable solutions, and they want us as a company to behave in a sustainable way. Sustainability is also important for our investors. If we don't have the right ESG ratings, they will not buy our shares. And on top of that, there's a lot of legislation coming from uh, the European uh, community at the moment. So in my opinion, sustainability is a core capability for the future. It is a bit like digitalization. It, it's a must do. And that is also the reason why we have some KPIs about sustainability. We want to be a responsible company, so we have KPIs about how to invest. And we want to be a green workplace, so we have KPIs for that. And we also want to be a sustainable insurance company, and of course we also have KPIs for that. But if you are a P&C company, and you really want to make a difference to the environment, you have to work systematically with your claims handling. And here I show you why. At the left, I show you that the total CO2 consumption for the TRUIC organization is 2,000 tons a year. And at the right, I give you a couple of examples of what we are saving with, uh, with, with, within the claims handling. And if, if you, for instance, look at the uh, glass repair, you can see that the savings that we have on a yearly basis is 3,300 tons. And that is only one type of claims within one line of business. So if you are a PNC company and really want to make a difference, you have to work with your claims handling. So a couple of key takeaways for me is, uh, the first one is raise the ambition, but let your employees set the targets. They are more ambitious than you believe. Stay relevant to the customers, deliver a lot of new products and services, and take responsibility also for the future. So uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me this morning about how Trek became the largest PNC company in Scandinavia. Thank you for all my very supportive colleagues that are on the first row today. Nice to see you. <laughs>